into 1A, in 2, and then output, and in with the XLR. Top your select bill and output. I don't feel too well, baby, come around. We're kissing all night long, and you're going down. I wanna stay right here, our love is bound. So. Find the one man who thinks it for ya. Okay, does that look good? I think it does. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new- oh my god I'm swinging in my chair already. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. In today's video I'm following up the last Ableton tutorial with the second part which is gonna be everything you need to know about recording vocals as a complete beginner from start to finish, everything you need to know, everything you need to buy, everything that you need basically. If you didn't see the first video which is a complete beginner Ableton tutorial just like how to work Ableton, how to understand it, go watch that video. I think it will really help you if you've clicked on this video. So yeah go check out the other Ableton videos I've done. I think I've done, yeah I've done two. So I've done everything you need to buy to become a producer. I've done a complete beginner Ableton tutorial and then this is going to be the follow up from that, the vocal tutorial, how to record vocals for beginners. So yeah let's just get into the video. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'm going to be doing way more videos like this. You can just comment what you want to be explained below and I can do You can just comment what you want to see below and I can do a Oh my god. You can just comment what you want to see below and I can do a tutorial on it. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I'm most active. I'll leave it on the screen here. And yeah, let's just get on with the video. I'm looking at my phone is because I've got notes. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is what you need to buy. So To be recording vocals, you need a few basic things. The first thing that you're gonna need is an audio interface. So I'm gonna talk about two different audio interfaces that I think are really good, like the two, I would say, best budget interfaces that there are. I'm gonna talk about the Focusrite Scarlett third generation, like you can get either the 2i2, which has got two microphone inputs, or you can just get the Focusrite Scarlett Solo, which has just got one input, which is what I'd recommend because, to be honest, you don't really need two recording inputs if you're just gonna record vocals. And then the other interface I'm gonna talk about is the Behringer UMC22, which is actually the one I have, so I could probably talk a bit better about that one, but I'm gonna compare them now. Basically, the Behringer UMC22 is pretty much the same as the Focusrite one, but it's about a hundred pound cheaper. Unconnected it so I could show it to you guys. So this is the Behringer one. It's very sturdy. It's got the one uh, microphone input, the guitar input, the gain, gain two, and then output, and then headphones. It's perfect, it's cute, it's not ugly. I don't really like the look of the red one because like red doesn't really go with my kind of vibe, but yeah. They both record in 24 bit depth, which is just like standard for interfaces. They both use phantom power, it's like 48 volts of phantom power, but with the Behringer one, I would highly recommend getting that one over the Focusrite one because it's just a lot cheaper. They basically are the same product. From a technical point of view, they do the same thing. And the Behringer one is just like crazily cheap for what it is, and it's really good. Used it for about two years, never had a problem with it. So yeah, I would recommend, I've got the links to everything I talk about down below, by the way so that you don't miss out on what I'm talking about. So yeah, ultimately I would recommend the Behringer one. Okay, um, the second thing like is kind of not really necessary if you use a Mac or like a MacBook or whatever, Apple software. If you're using a Mac like I am, my Mac is there. Oh, you can't see it. But yeah, my Mac is connected to my desktop screen. You will not need a driver for any interface that you buy with a MacBook or with a Mac like computer but if you have a Windows computer I'm pretty sure that for most interfaces you have to download a driver off the internet which is a bit confusing and I don't really know too much about it but all I know is that if you search what interface that you have the exact name into Google with driver after it you should find one and be able to download it for free. But yeah, they are free and mostly to what I know. With a MacBook, you're gonna have a built-in driver anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, the next thing that you will need for sure if you want to record vocals is a microphone. So you're gonna need a condenser microphone. So the recording microphone I use is the Rode NT1A. It's a very standard recording microphone. It's very affordable and it's very like, 
every pretty, pretty much everyone uses it, I'm not gonna lie. So the microphone will come with an XLR cable, but yeah, the XLR is like the gen generic microphone cable. But yeah, the reason that you're gonna need a condenser microphone as opposed to a dynamic microphone is that dynamic microphones are used for like live performances, for example, the Shure SM58. But yeah, I don't know a lot about other recording microphones. I know that the one of my favorite microphones is the Orpheus. What's it called? Sontronics. Fuck no, it's called the Orpheus. I really like that one, but it's like £500. This one's like £100. Mm, maybe a bit more than £100. I can't remember. It's like maybe £180. It's between the £100 and £200 range, so pretty much wherever you get it from. I've left a link down below to this microphone. But yeah, I'd highly recommend the Rode NT1A for recording rap vocals normal vocals, singing vocals, pretty much any vocals, even just recording talking, like this is a really highly recommended microphone by a lot of people. Okay, so the next thing that you will need for sure again is a pair of semi-open headphones. Okay, so you don't have to use semi-open, you can use closed or open, but semi-open is just the best for like all different purposes, so I just use semi-open because it's just easier than having a pair of each. I use the AKG um, I think they're called like MK2 or something. I've linked it down below. These are really good. They're semi-open, which means that you can hear through them. They're not, um, what's it called, noise cancelling. They're really cool as well, actually. They actually look pretty fly, I don't like. I recommend those. I've left a link to them down below. The reason that you're gonna need headphones is because you don't wanna be recording just through your speakers or like just out of your laptop because if that, that noise is then gonna be recorded into your vocals. Do you know what I mean? You want a very silent atmosphere. You want to be able to hear it in your headphones you want to hear your vocal also it's going to cause a lot of feedback if you don't have um headphones sounds like from the computer like you are going to get weird feedback and it's just i don't know i can't really explain it very well but you need headphones basically yeah if you don't have the money to buy proper headphones you could just use apple ones but i would recommend getting proper ones if you can but yeah just don't not use headphones is basically what i'm trying to say okay so now let's jump into the actual tutorial how to set everything up i'm going to be going through physically how to set everything up then i'm going to be going through how to set everything up on the computer in ableton then i'm going to be going through how to record and then a few settings that you'll need to know about and everything like that so yeah keep watching and we're going to hop into that now okay guys so the next thing i'm going to talk to you about is how to actually set everything up i will leave the time on the screen to skip to if you already know how to do this but for those of you who have literally never recorded vocals before i'm going to explain to you how to set up and also talk to you about um pop sockets pop sockets pop filters and um they called those little foam things that go around the microphone so yeah first thing that you want to do is set up your microphone on your stand the way you like it obviously i'd normally have it standing up i usually don't bother with putting a screen around my microphone i just use this and then i just record it in like a corner of the room because i'm not really that bothered about the vocals sounding too like completely dry and boxy like i really don't mind a little bit of natural reverb on the vocals so i usually don't bother with that also it's just another thing that you don't have to buy so then the first thing that i do is plug the microphone in with the xlr and the xlr goes into the interface here and then the headphones come out of the interface on the output then you can obviously just put them on your ear so yeah that's literally how to set up the microphone and then obviously the interface cable runs through the back into the usb into your laptop if you have a macbook you can use a usb adapter which is what i use i've literally got loads of them so yeah now i'm doing the screen recording we're gonna be talking about how to actually configure everything and how to set everything up properly so when you open up ableton i usually just go ahead into this view here then you want to just, sometimes I just delete the channels that I don't need. Let's change the color actually, cause that's ugly. Let's change it to pink. Okay, what did I change that one to? Right, okay. So the first thing I do is go into any audio channel and then I go to exit in, configure. You can also find this by going into your preferences and audio. So we'll just, use this way for now so the first thing you want to do is select your input and it will just be your usb obviously your interface and then output you'll either select your usb if you have your headphones plugged in to there or if you have the headphones plugged straight into the laptop you'll select the one output right now i've just got them in the laptop because i can be asked basically 
I just want to quickly add, if you're using Windows, this would be the point where you select the driver that you've downloaded that we talked about earlier. But if you're just using a Mac system, then it will just be called Core Audio or sometimes it's called Built-in Driver, I think. Okay, so now we've just closed Preferences for now. We're going to select In on here and then select the little red button there, which means that you're going to be recording that channel. Then if I go to Record here, you can see that we've got a recording happening. I'm just going to delete that for now. Okay, so a problem you might come across is latency, which means that you can hear your vocals after you're speaking. And when you hear it back in your headphones, it can be off-putting. And it's also, that's just, it's not meant to be like that. So what you can do is go back to configure and you can see here underneath um, all of this buffer size. Buffer size is basically your latency here in the latency section. So you want to select one that gives you the least latency. Sometimes it's 128, sometimes it's 64, sometimes it, it can be more. But just select the one, genuinely the lower ones. Select the one which enables you to hear the vocals back exactly as you're speaking them so that there's no latency whatsoever. So usually for me, it's 64. Okay. So that is about samples. If you bump into a problem with that, it's very simple to get over. Okay, so what we're going to now talk about is setting up the actual channel. As I talked about before, if you press in, that means that you're ready to record in. If you press off, that means that you're just going to be hearing the recording back. And sometimes you can just have it on auto, but I usually have it on either in or off. So when I'm recording vocals in, I select in and then I select the red button here and then I select record and I just record my vocals like so. And then as soon as I've recorded my vocals here, let, let me show you. So let's record something. It's not really going to be recording because I'm nowhere near the microphone. But there, let's say that I recorded something there. You see, as soon as I stop recording, it's it's turned off. I can't hear it back. It's playing back, but I can't hear it. That's because I've still got it selected as in. I need to then select off. And then there you go. It becomes a nice recording that you can hear. So that is what you need to do in order to hear back the vocals. If your vocals are too quiet, play with the gain on your interface. And sometimes I drag this up to six, which means it's just at like the fullest or I put it back to zero. Another thing that you might like to do is solo your channel in order to listen to listen back to the vocals on their own to check that there's no background noise or to just check that they're really good quality. So sometimes what I'll do is just select off and then solo to listen back. And then before I record again, press the solo off. And then before I record again, I'll click in. Also, usually it will be on the right one of these, but just select the one with the green bar coming up, which means it's the right channel on the interface. But yeah, I'm getting a signal here, as you can see. I tend not to touch any of the other buttons like this. This is just the channel that you're hearing it from. I keep it on master. I tend not to play around with any of these things apart from the record button, the solo button, in, off, auto, all of that stuff. So yeah, I hope that explains you. Also, another thing that's handy, you can rename your channel. Oh, I can't spell like vocals or something. So yeah, very handy. But yeah, that is all about how to record vocals on Ableton. So let's just go back to the video. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. Another thing that I would quickly add to my little screen recording there is that I would recommend doing a few mic tests before you actually go ahead and record the full thing, just because it can be really frustrating if you have a problem like it's too quiet or it's too loud or you're getting um, feedback. Or sometimes if you have the gain too high, usually over like the 50% mark, if you have the gain too high, you're gonna get like, you're gonna get peaking and clipping in the vocal. So what I'd recommend doing is just do one or two or maybe even three mic tests before just so that um just so that you know that everything's set up right and then go ahead and start recording but yeah okay guys so that is all for today's video i hope you found it helpful and hopefully you learned something about recording vocals if you still are confused about the setup of ableton make sure to check out my last videos and if you still want to know what else you're gonna need to buy to be a better producer then check out my first ableton video but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video follow me on my tiktok and instagram is where i'm completely active like all day every day so yeah i will see you guys in the next video